Tonight, can Apple Pay dominate China? Is Roku going public? And who's buying all these Microsoft Surface Pro 3 tablets? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 201 for Friday, October 24th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everybody. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. First up... Recode reports that CEO Larry Page is transferring leadership of core Google products such as Research, Search, Maps, Google+, Commerce, and Ads, and infra infra Infrastructure, that's a lot of things, to Sundar Pichai, citing sources close to the situation. Pichai will continue to keep his existing responsibility for Android, Chrome, and Google Apps. Reportedly, Page has said in meetings with staff about the changes that he wants to focus on the bigger picture and is unable to do that with so many reports and a myriad of duties related to each product unit. It's worth noting that YouTube is being left out of the centralization effort with CEO Susan Wojcicki still reporting to Page, not Pachai. Music sales are falling at Apple's iTunes store. Specifically, sales have dropped 14% worldwide since the start of the year, according to people familiar with the matter. Speaking with the Wall Street Journal, which also reports that Apple's rebuilding beats music and plans to relaunch it next year as part of iTunes. Factoring in CD sales, which have been dropping for over 10 years, overall music sales in most of the world has basically fall, fallen flat last year. Uh, uh, unless, of course, you factor in Japan, which had drops in both physical and digital sales. This year's decline in global iTunes music sales mirrors domestic declines. U.S. revenue from downloads of singles and albums fell 11% and 14% respectively in the first half of 2014. That's according to to the Recording Industry Association of America. But a 28% jump in revenue from streaming music services helped overall digital revenue increase slightly to $2.2 billion in the first six months of the year. Now, speaking of Apple, CEO Tim Cook was in China this week and today told local publication Xinhua that he hopes to adapt all of Apple's developments to work for the Chinese market. In fact, Cook specifically said, Quote, we want to bring Apple Pay to China. I'm convinced there will be enough people that want to use it. It's going to be successful, end quote. Apple's market share in China is around 16% after Samsung's 23% and China's home brand, Xiaomi, uh, which hovers around 21%, according to a survey by Cantor uh, World Panel Comtech on January through May market statistics. When Apple announced its new iPad Air 2 and Mini 3, it didn't make a big deal about the new Apple SIM card designated to be usable across a variety of wireless carriers, both in the U.S., the U.K., uh, and including AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and U.K.'s E. Uh, too good to be true? Possibly. Mac Rumors started noticing posts on its forums that AT&T isn't actually supporting this interchangeability and is locking the SIM included with cellular models of the compatible iPad models. In response, an AT&T spokesperson tells Recode that AT&T customers who use the Apple SIM with AT&T will need a different SIM card to switch carriers and that, quote, with us, you can change carriers with this iPad anytime you want. It is an unlocked device. All you have to do is switch out the SIM in the device so it works on another carrier. It's just simply the way we've chosen to do it, end quote. Now, here's a little something to chew on over the weekend. On-demand TV service and cord cutter darling Roku Inc. is planning to file for an initial public offering. The Wall Street Journal, of course, reports this, citing people familiar with the matter, who also say Roku has been working with investment banks, including Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Citigroup, to prepare for a potential offering that could raise as much as $150 million dollars. Roku declined to comment. Now, coming up, which Google exec jumped from space to Earth and smashed Felix, Felix Baumgartner's record? And after the break, we'll chat with Windows Central's Sam Sabri about the future of Microsoft, the Lumia name, why hardware is working for the software company. But first, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website 
or online portfolio. Some of the reasons why you'll love Squarespace, beautiful designs. They have 25 beautiful templates for you to start with and recently added a logo creator tool. It's easy to use if you want some help. Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. E-commerce now available for all subscription plan levels, including the ability to accept donations, which is great for nonprofits, cash wedding registries, school fund drives, and plans start at just $8 a month and includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Two apps metric app for iPhone uh, and iPad allows you to check site stats like page views, unique visitors, and social media follows. With the blog app, you can make text updates, tap and drag images to change layouts and monitor comments on the go, and hosting is included. Squarespace takes care of the hosting so you don't have to. So start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your own website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use the offer code TECHNIGHT to get 10% off and to show your support for Tech News Tonight. We thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. A better web awaits, and it starts with your new Squarespace website. All right, joining me right now is Sam Sabri, Managing Editor of Windows Central. How's it going, Sam? Great. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing fantastic. We're here, of course, to talk a little bit about Microsoft. Back in mm -hmm. April, Microsoft purchased Nokia's phone arm, and since then, we've been awaiting kind of more information on exactly what kind of devices the company would offer as a result. And now we know what Microsoft will call those devices. Is that right? Right, we do. So before today was Nokia Lumia, and then a number for a product. Going forward, it's going to be Microsoft Lumia. So they're just dropping the Nokia name and going forward with Microsoft Lumia. Mm -hmm. And they'll use this name for their smartphones, you know, based on Windows Phone. And for their uh, dumb phones, the things that you might find in emerging markets, the phones that don't really have any kind of advanced operating system, they'll still continue to use the Nokia name. Gotcha. Now, Microsoft also said that it would be, quote, unveiling a, a Microsoft Lumia device soon, end quote. Right. Uh, is it safe to, to imagine that soon might actually mean in time for the holiday season? And how important is this new device for my, so Microsoft? We, we think so. Uh, as far as we know, there's no new product or no brand new Windows phone coming out from Microsoft going uh, in the near future. But we think the Nokia Lumia 830, which will now be called the Microsoft Lumia 830, might be the phone that they're talking about. And that's going to come out, we're expecting uh, an AT&T version uh, in a few weeks on November 7. Okay. Now, obviously, this is a you know big marketing shift. We've been kind of waiting for this to see, you know, obviously, we're going to be waiting for a while to see what it means long term. Mm -hmm. uh, what does this mean for previous Nokia brand Lumia devices in the hands of consumers right now? Does it actually it, mean anything to them? It doesn't mean anything. Going forward, they'll still get support for their devices. Uh, the only difference will be their phones say Nokia versus Microsoft. Mm -hmm. um, we still don't know exactly how the branding is going to look on the phone, whether it's going to say Microsoft Lumia or just Lumia or Microsoft. But old uh, anyone with a Nokia Lumia right now can expect this, you know, support going forward. Nothing changes for them. Gotcha. And finally, of course, yesterday, Microsoft recorded strong earnings, uh, mm -hmm. $23.2 billion for the quarter. Uh, how important is this Lumia branding and this line of phones to future earnings reports for Microsoft? Where does it factor in, do you think? It, it, I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Microsoft continues to try and grow Windows Phone and especially, you know, their own hardware brand. Surface is doing pretty well, and so it'd be nice to see some, you know, similar success for that Lumia brand. Right on. Uh, Sam Sabri, Managing Editor at Windows Central. We got in, we got to the, the nugget of the story, and that is it. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk Thanks about this. Me. Where can people follow your work online? Uh, WindowsCentral.com. I'm on all social networks as uh, Sam Sabri. Awesome. Everyone look for Sam there. Thank you again. Thanks for having me. All righty. And finally, computer scientist and senior vice president at Google, Alan Eustace, uh, 57, parachuted from a balloon near the top of the stratosphere earlier today, falling faster than the speed of sound and breaking the world altitude record set just two years ago by Felix Baumgartner, who jumped from 128,100 feet on October 14, 2012. At dawn, Eustace was lifted from an abandoned airport runway by a balloon filled with 35,000 cubic feet of helium, wearing a specially designed spacesuit with an elaborate life support system. He returned to Earth just 15 minutes after starting his fall. Eustace cut himself loose from the balloon with the aid of a small explosive device. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. And plummeted toward the Earth at speeds that peaked 822 miles per hour, setting off a small sonic boom heard by observers on the ground, or as we on TN2 like to say, baller. 
That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. Do not miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today, every weekday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.